guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my September slash October reading wrap up. I can't even believe it's gonna be November. I'm literally not done with spooky season yet, clearly because I'm wearing my Scream shirt today. I just love fall. I think it's my favorite season. I could not pick up a book this summer because every book that I went to go read disappointed me. And then I finally got out of my reading slump because as you know, it's fantasy girl fall and my favorite genre is romanticy. I'm like, all right, this is my time of year to shine. I am pleasantly surprised to say that every book I read in September or October, I did not rate below a four stars which is crazy. If you guys are interested in what I read for the months of September and October, then just keep watching. Okay, let's start off with one of my most anticipated reads for the year. And I'm gonna combine the two because I read Powerful by Lauren Roberts and Reckless by Lauren Roberts. So Powerful is the novella between Powerless and Reckless. You guys know how much I like Powerless. I made a short and that's one of my most popular shorts on my channel. I rated Powerless a 4.5. I actually realize now that I kind of lied in my intro, intro. I rated this novella three stars, but I'm not gonna count that because it's a novella. If you guys aren't familiar with the first book, Powerless, go read it first before starting these two. Okay, so I'm not gonna get into too much detail about Powerless. So for those who have read Powerless, I read the novella Powerful and this, without spoiling it, this novella is about a character in the first book, Powerless, and a little bit more about their story and what happens to them. This novella was unnecessary for me because I knew what was going to happen to this character. This novella really didn't do much for me. I wasn't very emotional like other people said that they were. I read the comments on one of my shorts and a lot of people were saying how, how emotional they got when reading this novella. I didn't really feel anything <laughs> because I knew what was going to happen and the story kind of fell flat for me. I did rate it a three stars just because the novella was well written, but I don't think it's necessary to the story. The only thing we got from this novella was a new character, and the new character wasn't in Reckless, so I'm like, where does this new character fall in the plot? Maybe they will appear in book three, who knows? But other than that, Powerful is not necessary to go on and continue reading Reckless. So with that, we're going to talk about Reckless. Like I said, this is book two to Powerless. Lauren's writing improved so much from the first book. I was kind of impressed, but I wasn't shocked because I knew I know she's older now. And I think she's 25, which is my age. And she wrote powerless when she was 19 so of course her writing is going to improve basically we have Peyton and Kai Peyton is a ordinary girl born in a kingdom where people were blessed with powers after this awful plague and the king decided to kill everyone in Ilya who doesn't have a power from this plague the king has a son named Kai and Kai is the enforcer and he is sent out by the king to kill these ordinaries one day Peyton and Kai meet and that's how their love story begins and that's book one, so that's Powerless, and then we have Reckless. The way that things ended in Powerless were kind of crazy. I was dying to get book two. This book made me laugh with the banter between Peyton and Kai. I couldn't give it five stars just because I did guess the ending. Um, the ending is still crazy, but it's exactly how I wanted Reckless to end because I think it's brought a lot of tension between all the characters and I'm just dying to know what's going to happen next. I have so many questions on what's going to happen in book three but I can't say my questions because I don't want to spoil it for you guys if you guys haven't read Powerless. So with that being said I gave this book 4.75 stars. This was the first book that got me out of my summer reading slump. Next book I'm going to talk about that I read was Bride by Ellie Hazelwood. Bride is about a vampire named Misery who is used as vampire collateral in human and werewolf negotiations. We have Lo who is the new alpha that overthrew the last alpha Roscoe. To keep the peace between the vampires and the werewolves who hate each other, Misery decides she will marry Lo in a new vampire 
their werewolf negotiation but she has some intentions of her own for marrying him it's not to help her vampire family my thoughts listen i was here for a good time this book gave me exactly what i needed and what I was looking for at the time. I have read the reviews of this book and you were either in love with this book or you absolutely hate it. And I can understand why people hate it because there's some questionable, there is some questionable scenes. If you have never read about the alpha or omega complex, then I would maybe read about it before you start this book and see if it's for you or not so you don't waste your time but your girl has read a fan fiction before so i was not phased by this and people shouldn't be surprised that this came from Allie Hazelwood because she was a fan fiction author originally was it the best fantasy book i've ever read no but i ate it up all the same this was my first Allie Hazelwood read and it did not disappoint me the ending for me was very anticlimactic but it was still really cute do i know that there's going to be a sequel to this book i don't really see myself reading the sequel i feel like Allie Hazelwood should have just kept this book a standalone. I gave this book 4.5 stars. The next book I read was First Lie Wins, Ashley Elston, and this is a thriller book. Surprisingly, because I saw really bad reviews on this book, I personally gave this book a 5 stars, and I'm going to tell you why. This book was unlike any other thriller book I've read. Yes, it's confusing, and yes, it goes back and forth between, between present day and the past way too much. I think this book could have been even shorter. It's only a... This book is 340 pages. I feel like it could have easily been a 280-page book if it didn't go back and forth between all the stories of the past, but... It did make sense in the end and it was very clever and thought out. This book is about Evie Porter. Evie Porter doesn't know who Mr. Smith is besides the fact that he is her handler who sends her out on missions under different aliases to find blackmail on different targets who are people. Evie Porter is not actually Evie Porter. Evie Porter is another alias that she uses. Abby Porter's newest target is her boyfriend Ryan Sumner. She was sent out to become his girlfriend. They didn't know each other before the mission and Abby Porter starts to wonder who Mr. Smith actually is and what his intentions are for her. While she's on this mission with her boyfriend Ryan Sumner, a character shows up midway through the story that definitely should not be in the same town as her on this mission. The story basically goes back and forth through present day and the past and it shows you all the different aliases Abby Porter has used and at the end it just all comes together and you find out who Mr. Smith is and what he wants from Abby and I don't know. This book wasn't like any other thriller I've ever read before and for that reason I gave it five stars but I totally see why people wouldn't like this book. Next book I read, which was on my Kindle, was Quicksilver by Kelly Hart. Now this is supposedly the romanticy book of the year. This book is about Sarah Spain, who is a human who lives in Zalvarin in the Third Ward. The Third Ward is considered diseased and supplies are restricted by the Queen Maedra, who is the ruler of Zalvarin. This leaves Sarah to survive by stealing. Sarah steals the possession of Queen Maedra's and her her brother is caught with this possession. In order to save her brother from execution, Sarah seals her fate and admits to the queen that she's actually the one who stole this possession. The queen orders her death and she is saved by King Fisher, who is a fae from another realm. Sarah possesses a magical power that she had no idea she possessed and she accidentally opens up a portal to the Fey Realm. King Fisher takes Ceres back to the Fey Realm because he realizes she might be the key to ending a Fey War that's been going on in this realm. King Fisher really doesn't like Ceres and this book is if you love enemies to lovers, you will love this book. Anna's thoughts about this book is I rated this book a 4.75 stars but I took a lot of things under consideration because it was was a heavier romanticy. So unlike Bride by Ellie Hazelwood, that is like a simple fantasy and Quicksilver was, was a heavier fantasy for sure. I kind of want to lower my rating, but I kind of don't only because 
I know that Callie Hart took so much inspiration from Crescent City, Akatar, Throne of Glass, which is which if you guys don't know, all three of those series are written by Sarah J. Mass. There's a lot of inspiration, a lot of ideas. The only original idea of this book is that there are vampires, but she did it in a respectful way, I guess. I absolutely loved the romance in this book. King Fisher reminds me of Kai Azer from Powerless if Kai were to have a dirty mouth. King Fisher is one of my new book boyfriends. I'm absolutely obsessed with him. The romance was five stars for sure. The fantasy though was three stars. And so I don't really know where that puts this. I guess it should be a four stars, but I don't know. I really had such a good time reading this book that I don't want to give it just four stars. So that's kind of why I give it 4.75 stars. But now I'm like, should it be a 4.5 stars? And I just was going back and forth on this so much that I'm just like, you know what, I'm just going to keep it at 4.75 stars. The series could really, the, the next book in the series is really going to make or break the series depending on where this author goes. I have no idea where she's going to take this story, but <sighs> like the romanticy was top tier, but the fantasy was very questionable. I had a lot of questions at the end of this book that it just didn't make sense. It felt like things were wrapped up really quickly. There were there was like subplots of other characters that I'm like what happened with this character at the end? Um, like did we just forget about her? I don't know. It was very very questionable. I'm like maybe book two answers these questions. I don't know. Maybe my rating of the first book will go down once I read book two. I don't know what to do. This book was a little confusing but I really did enjoy reading it and I do want to push other people to read this book because I think it was really good. Then we have Wild Eyes by Elsie Silver which I also read on my Kindle. This is a part of the Rose Hill series which comes after the Chestnut Spring series. The Chestnut Spring series is one of my most treasured book series. I absolutely love that book series. I was so underwhelmed by Wild Love, which is the first book in the Rose Hill series. I did not want to read Wild Eyes, which is the second book that I just read in the series. But I feel like Elsie Silver saved the series a little bit with Wild Eyes. I don't love the Rose Hill series as much as I love Chestnut Springs, but it got better. And you know what? I've seen a lot of booktubers say that too, and I'm glad I'm not the only one. This book starts out with Skylar Stone, who is a popular country singer, taking a selfie with a grizzly bear on the side of the road. We have Weston Belmont that first sees Skylar taking a selfie with this grizzly bear, and he's like, oh my god, I have to go save this girl. What is she doing? Does she not know that she's taking a selfie with a grizzly bear? So that's how they meet. Skylar Stone Stone comes to Rose Hill originally because she needs to get away from LA and she wants to record at Ford Grant's music studio. Ford Grant is the first book boyfriend in Wild Love. So we see him in Wild Love and now it's West's and Skylar's story. This was a surprise visit on Skylar's part. She just shows up. Ford Grant is not ready for Skylar. So he offers her to stay at his best friend West's house who she met with the grizzly bear. Elsie Silver delivers in the spice department. She is the best romance author for that kind of stuff. The Rose Hill series is a single dad series so all the book boyfriends in the Rose Hill series are gonna be single dads. West has two kids who were a very nice addition to this book. The kids made the book super cute. I loved everything that they were saying to Skylar. I was literally giggling as I was reading this book. I thought it was so cute. I couldn't rate Wild Eyes a five star just because the Rose Hill series isn't as... I'm not getting the same homey feeling as I was with the Chestnut Spring series, but I still am liking the series. I'm so glad that I gave book two a chance. So I rated Wild Eyes a 4.5 stars. And then another book I read in October was Caught Up by Liz Tom Ford. This was also on my Kindle. This is a part of the Winnie City series. So we have Mile High, The Right Move, Caught Up, and Play Along. 
And I've heard such negative reviews about Mile High, but then I've heard that this, the series gets so much better as it goes on. And honestly, I was in the mood for a sports romance book, which is so unlike me, but I knew I didn't want to start out with Mile High. The Windy City series is an interconnected standalone series, so I knew I didn't want to start with Mile High. And I knew I could start anywhere, but for some reason, instead of like The Right Move, which is the second book, and I've heard that The Right Move is really good, I started out with Caught Up because it was a single dad trope and I was just in the mood for it. So I read Caught Up, which is the third book in the Windy City series. We meet Kai Rhodes, who is a professional baseball player for the Windy City Warriors in Chicago and Kai just unexpectedly became a single dad. He has a past fling show up at his door dumping a baby on him and the girl claims that she no longer wants to be a mother to this baby and that it's Kai's baby. So Kai takes on this new fatherly role and he has absolutely no idea what he's doing. He's 32. This was not planned at all. This was a this was the biggest surprise of his life. We have Miller Montgomery who is a pastry chef and she is the daughter of coach Montgomery who is Kai's coach for the Windy City Warriors. Miller is a no strings attached girl. She does not like to be in the same area for very long. She is always on the move in her van and she is hired by multiple kitchens across the US to help in their dessert section of their menus and she is feeling this burnout so she goes and visits her dad in Chicago because he is her only family. She has no job for the summer so what does her dad do? Her dad suggests that she nannies for Kai and that's their story. The spice was so good. The romance was amazing. I gave this book 4.5 stars. Yeah, Kai Rhodes definitely got added to my book boyfriend list, but then I read book number four, which is Play Along, and in book three, we meet Kai's brother, Isaiah, and he is a jokester. Honestly, he was annoying to me in Caught Up. I knew his story was book four, which is Play Along, and I was hesitant to read Play Along, but I heard such amazing reviews, and those reviews did not disappoint because I ended up rating Play Along five stars. This book is about Isaiah Rhodes. He has had the longest crush on his, on his physical trainer, Kennedy. She wants absolutely nothing to do with him. This play along is the fake dating trope. The team goes to Las Vegas and Kennedy is there on a bachelorette trip and Isaiah and Kennedy run into each other, get super drunk, and end up married. And I love that they got married in Las Vegas because I spent the last two years living in Las Vegas so I knew all the places that they were talking about. No, now I know more about Isaiah and why he's always trying to crack jokes and make the most inappropriate comments at the worst times. Surprisingly, I actually like Isaiah Rhodes over Kai now. Just the inappropriate comments Isaiah makes is so funny to Kennedy and just the dialogue is amazing. I was literally laughing out loud as I was reading play along. The way that Isaiah is so down for Kennedy is just so cute and the way that he sticks up for her amazing. Chef's kiss. I loved everything about this book and I think that the Winnie series is gonna be added to my most favorite series of all time. Let me know if you guys want a video talking about my favorite series. I could definitely yap about my favorite series. Also let me know if you guys think I should read The Right Move or Mile High first because I have to complete the series now. Those were all the books that I read for the months of September and October. Let me know if you guys like this video and I will do more reading wrap-ups. I make videos every week so be sure to subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys next week. Bye!